What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. Today we're going to actually cover a uh, tournament that not a lot of people are covering, uh, but there was this really cool tech that came out of first place uh, from Gabriel Legati, so I, I want to talk about the results of this tournament. It was a smaller regional, there were only uh, 83 Masters players, where we have like 500 to 600 right now for um, like North American and European tournaments, but that doesn't mean these small tournaments shouldn't get looked at, so... We're going to give Brazil the respect it deserves today. Before we do this, if you guys enjoy this same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. That's my comment question of the day, which is, what do you think about the first place team? We're going to talk about it. Michael? Hello. Michael's here. I'm here too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. So let's talk about this first place team. So Gabriel Gatti, obviously like a phenomenal player, right? Um, his team did something really cool that I think we might possibly see pick up uh, in uh, other tournaments because it, it looks like a it looks like a standard like Fluttermane plus like Tailwind Lumbery Dragonite team that we see a lot in like current uh, tournaments right now. We saw it at um, Vancouver. I'm pretty sure we saw it at um, Knoxville. Like we saw a couple of these. There's a lot of this at Knoxville, yeah. Yeah. But the adjustment it makes, you know, we still see like King Gambit. Terra Dark's a little bit weird for King Gambit, but like we still see like the standard like two support Tailwind Hyper Off and stuff. But instead of a Great Tusk, there's a Garchomp. Now, Michael and I were looking at this and we're like, what does we're this do? Numbers. Yeah, yeah, we're running the numbers. And there's one thing that every Great Tusk player hates about Great Tusk. It will never outspeed Booster Energy Iron Bundle or Protosynthesis or booster energy, Fluttermane. You can't outspeed them, not under Tailwind, not if they have their boost. You can outspeed them without the Tailwind. And that's why sometimes we'll see like, maybe instead of like a Dragonite, you'll put like a Corviknight for the mirror the mirror armor stuff to like lower iron bundle speed where you can outspeed it. But it's a little bit less consistent than what we see here, which is just Garchomp, base 102 speed. It outspeeds all of them. It runs Terra Fire to not get burnt, and you don't even care about like terastalizing into a ground type because you're just running Choice Band at that point. This thing's insane, dude. Hey, do you have, do you have yeah. any thoughts about Garchomp? For me, like when it comes to Garchomp over Great Tusk, at the beginning of the format, Great Tusk kind of just overshadowed Garchomp, but it has its own niche because they're weak to the same stuff, right? If it's the Great Tusk slot that is losing you games to these Iron Bundles and Flutter Mains. Garchomp weirdly does do a little bit better despite having the same weaknesses, the same mm -hmm. flaws as Great Tusk. It's just yeah. that speed that really helps. Yeah, like the one thing that you're really giving up Great Tusk for, like the only thing, I'll be honest, the only reason we're really running Great Tusk over Garchomp in the current format is one, it has like close combat, which is obviously a good Quite move. move. Gar yeah, Garchomp's yeah. got a rim brick break, but it's the strong single target move, a uh, ground move headlong rush. Because, like, beyond that, Headlong Rush, Close Combat, Earthquake, not Earth Power, Earthquake, yeah, and like, Protect. Garchomp's, Garchomp's single target move that it uses is Dragon Claw, which is, like, Also Stomping Tantrum. Great. Well, uh, yeah, but even that one is, like, not even that great. But Dragon Claw, being its single target move, allows you to hit other dragons, which is something, again, that Great Tusk can't do. Like, it can opt to run Ice Spinner, but then you're not running one of the two stabs that you want, like... Um, yeah close combat or headlong rush yeah and you always want to have like earthquake with headlong rush because it, it patches up like yeah. the annihilate matchup it patches up like the ndd armorage matchup uh if they're like not clicking wide guard that is so it's it's that's like the one thing it's just single target moves this garchomp sort of remedies that low power by just being built different literally built different choice band right uh, and, and Great Tusk have already switched to running a lot of Scarf anyway, so it's not like a choice lock is stopping you from making the switch, right? Uh, Rough Skin's also really nice on Fake Out. You break Sashes on Pokemon with that. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Like, it just being able to, like, run a faster Pokemon uh, than these, like, problem Pokemon, the Iron Bundle and the, uh, and the uh, Fluttermane is, like, awesome. Uh, and it's not like Iron Bundle takes a hit all too well either. It's a Choice Banded Dragon Claw or, like, a Choice Banded Earthquake. Rock slide even. Yeah, rock slide even. Like how much is rock slide doing to uh iron bundle? Let's once see. you get this thing, once you get this thing under tailwind too, by the way, it's like the tailwind setter on the team is Dragonite, so that's where the damage is gonna be coming from. So if you have Garchomp out in the field under tailwind, it's just clicking strong rock slides, and that's just always in your favor. Like Yeah, here. So like choice band, rock slide, 
is doing 66 to Iron Bundle and you outspeed it. If they're not running Covert Cloak, which you're not really scared of, you're mostly scared of like the Focus Sash sets and stuff. Uh, or not Focus Sash, you're mostly scared of like booster energy stuff because that's like the reason you're running the Garchomp, right? Uh, your Rock Slide does almost enough I mean, it does like 78%, right? But like, that's that's like enough where it's like, okay, a single flinch will win you that matchup, right? Uh, yeah. Like, that's a strong rock slide. It's um, also 100. It also 100% puts it in extreme speed range for Dragonite, which is also yeah, huge. like and it's sucker punch range for King Gambit. Like this, this team is it. The, each piece works together. I think yeah. is the coolest part it, of it. It feels like what we were just talking about with Neil, how Neil was running like outrage on his uh, Dragonite to put everything into like Don Dozo range. Garchomp just feels like it's not taking KOs, but it softens literally everything up. So yeah. you just take KOs with Extreme Speed Dragonite with Sucker Punch King Gambit. And that might explain like the Terra Dark on the King Gambit is you just want to power up that Sucker Punch for late game. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like really cool. And also Flutterman. He literally has like two, I beat you up, you like take way too much damage and then I clean up with stuff in the back Pokemon. Like Choice Specs Flutterman is the other one of those. Yeah, I mean, that's why choice items are kind of trending up right now. Even in Knoxville and Vancouver, we saw like the rise of Choice Specs and Scar um, Choice Band. Less so Choice Scarf, but for the reason that you said of uh, like extra damage softening them up for these priority moves that have been so common all throughout just this gen. <laughs> yeah, and we also see the record here. 5-2 in Swiss, 8-2 uh, overall records. That means, yeah, obviously winning means that you go undefeated in day two. Like, that's basically what, what it means. <laughs> what, did he, what did he kind of fight against? Like, what else? What is? What are we looking at matchup-wise? Because I see a Gold Like, just Bengo. other Pokemon? Like, we can look at second place, right, and guarantee that's what that's he faced. Second, yeah, two. Okay, so second and third being two Gold Mangos, right? Yeah. I saw something really cool about uh, Agati's Arcanine is that it has Morning Sun. Mm-hmm. You that take that, make Gold it Bengo rain. <laughs> That and then he just go matchup up. very easy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and unless it's like covert cloak, like you don't snarling's like not an issue, right? Here, uh, water yeah. leftovers, yeah, it's leftovers, golden go, uh, booster energy, roaring moon. That's another one that we're not mentioning. Booster energy, roaring moon does not want to take a rock slide. That thing's like physical defense is garbage. And yes, you can dragon claw, but they're usually terra flying. If we actually look at this one right here, yeah, it's terra flying. So let's actually throw that roaring moon in the damage calc. Booster Energy Acrobatics, let's Terrastalize it into a Flying type. Your Rock Slide is doing 70 to 83%, and you have a chance to flinch if you have that Tailwind up. Yeah, like, I don't know, this seems just very well built. The more I look at it, the more, like, every piece plays together. Yeah, this might be, like, my ladder team for a minute, like, <laughs> just, to, <laughs> just to get some points, you know? Um, and then, you know, beyond that, like, a lot of stuff becomes standard. Something that I do want to point out is, um, like, there's a big representation of Gar not Garchomp, of uh, Arcanine in this top cut. If we actually take a look at like um, the tournament immediately after this one, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Vancouver. Yeah, I mean, Arcanine stock's been up like. Yeah, well, the thing is like Vancouver right after it, only one Arcanine in like the top cut, right? This one just in abundance of Arcanine. Like there are so many Arcanine that you, you couldn't keep track of all of them. Uh, I, I would hate to be the person who had to remember like going into like top eight, right? Oh, who am I facing? Here are like my 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 three rounds of like play. Uh, they all have Arcanine. I have to like keep all of their spreads straight in my head. <laughs> like that just sounds yeah, that like is, the yeah, worst. Because <laughs> it's not like Fluttermane where it's like, oh, it's... 252 you know it's it's like it's an arcanine like you don't know what it outspeeds uh like the and, scouting and has got to be rough there gabriel's is probably like super bulky too to have snarl and morning oh 100 percent. like that's got to be like a slow arcanine for that yeah. to make sense <laughs> bro's getting out spin by gold bangos yeah. terra flying is also really cool because it means your arcanine hard walls great tusk it doesn't do a thing to you true flying types honestly i think flying type stocks are up exclusively because yeah, of great tusk Terra flying Arcanine, yeah, that is actually really cool. Because I I saw people doing that with Amoongus to try and beat Great Tusk Talonflame teams. Yeah, like, same concept on Arcanine. In yeah, fact, yeah, better because you have a recovery move too. Mm -hmm. All right, so I mean, we can take a quick look at uh, second place and then like just look at the rest of the top cut and then do like a general trend of like what else we saw. Uh, Focus Sash, Iron Bundle, Booster Energy, Roaring Moon. Obviously, that's like a really good matchup for this team because the Iron Bundle isn't running booster. You don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, it's mostly just like if you prevent Tailwind, you're like good to go. Uh, but uh, Iron Hands was just standard like Assault Vest. We see Water, Leftovers, Golden Go. Could be Bold and Go. Uh, and just, this looks like a pretty, yeah, this looks like a pretty standard like Roaring Moon hyper offense team with like some balance options actually. 
Yeah, crucially no like like priority moves on that team. No extreme speed. No none of that. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, here's something that actually caught my eye. I I'm pretty sure I haven't looked at this yet. There's a mouse hold on this team, but nothing that mouse hold particularly likes to support. But there is a golden go. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say it's golden go. It's golden go. And we see its weakness policy, dude. But what I'm honestly surprised about that hasn't been like. I mean, it's been dominant, but it's not been winning anything. Is yeah, Muscle Goldengo because it feels very strong next to like Water Goldengo. I believe it. It, it does. They could do either. Yeah, I think I think you want to be Steel because it makes it a lot easier to get your weakness policy, right? Because like if, if you're running policy. Water, if you're running Water, no one's gonna Thunderbolt you. No one's gonna like Bullet Seed into a Golden Go. Like it, they have to make the read, right? Um, and they're gonna be cautious as like a Steel type. With a friend hard mouse, friend hard with a friend guard mouse hold next to you, you're gonna take an earthquake, right? And then you just make it rain and they drop. Well, that's that's what it is for. Um, they don't even have beat up on the mouse hold to activate it. It's just yeah. hey, don't earthquake. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's all it is. Here, here's another crazy one. You ready for this? Armorouge, leftovers, Terra normal, flamethrower, expanding force, calm mind, protect. When I see Terra normal, <laughs> do you want to know what I think? I think this person hates annihilate <laughs> and they're perfectly fine taking like a, a drain punch or two if they're running like leftovers like as long as they don't set up on you like your flamethrower you just get that burn you're good to go that is super cool I that's like that. yeah there's no trick room either that's yeah that's gotta be like, like armor on armor on its own is a good pokemon like, yeah 100 really helps it but like this is such yeah. a weird way to run it i guess wait wait that's why there's a mouse hold next to it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, mouse hold plus setup, right? We saw it in Sword and Shield, even. Yeah, Redirector, with like Clefairy. Can set up. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is just like the quintessential mouse hold team. All right, uh, let's take a look at top four. That's an interesting one. Yeah, I, I mean, Sandy shot Terra Bug. Hold on, I'm, I'm doing some mental math. Okay, I know what it's for. Uh, that's for Great Tusk. <laughs> and probably for Terra grass on dozo as well that would wall you yeah it's pretty interesting you know uh we see terra fire king gambit which actually won uh vancouver so uh that's that's kind of cool uh it's just a defensive terra though it doesn't seem to have terra blast or anything on it uh friend guard mouse hold dude mouse hold just trending upwards kind of crazy it's i mean mouse hold goldengo honestly come charlotte i can see that being all over the place yeah yeah uh looking at the rest of top cut Oh, uh, I don't think we have to go like too in depth with like the actual teams, but we do see just general trends. Uh, awesome. Yeah, there's one Gothitelle. Gothitelle Palafin is a combo I like to run quite a bit. Uh, it's actually Gothitelle Fluttermane as well. I kind of want to see if there's like a random Parish song on there. Yeah, it's like two attacks Parish song. It's not like a hard Parish trap team. They do have like the option to play it that way though. You see, uh, you know, Amoongus, Arcanine. Gothitelle, Fluttermane is basically like the Parish Trap mode, but all these mons are so flexible that you could do like Iron Hands, Arcanine, Palafin, Amoongus, and do just as well as like an offensive team, you know? Yeah. Amoongus uh, plus that setup, um, Iron Hands is pretty cool too. Yeah. Sword Stance, Fire Punch, that's always a fun set to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, we just see like standard Dondozo, Hyper Offense stuff, um, another like Mouse Hold, Friend Guard thing. And this one's pretty interesting. This is like a, um, it's, it's a sand team, but it doesn't feel like a sand team. You know, if Corviknight Gastrodon, it's Cover Cloak Gastrodon. I, Cover Cloak is still just for Garganical and Gastrodon, isn't it? I can't think of like another purpose beyond like Snarl and Fake Out. It, and honestly, that one doesn't feel it's, like it's good it's enough to run it for that. More for Snarl than anything. Because if you hit Gastrodon with a Snarl one time, it's kind of not doing anything. It's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true, I guess. Yeah. Um, Choice Bikes, Flutterman. Tailwind, Corviknight, Corviknight got second at uh, Vancouver, obviously we know this. This just feels like a good team. Like, it's yeah. fat. It feels annoying to fight. Ooh, yo, yo. Put the two potential, like, up-and-comers next to each other. Put a setup Corviknight next to Mousehold. I'm telling you, that's your Charlotte call. Boom. I got it. <laughs> Don't listen to Michael. Alright, uh, just the rest of, like, day two, uh, we see... I don't know. This is pretty interesting. We see a, a Paris Trap team. This is just Wolf's team, isn't it? Except uh, Brute Bonnet over Amoongus. Yep. Yeah. So that's basically Wolf's team. We see uh, Taurus Water. Uh, it's just like in DD Armors plus Taurus Water. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Probably, probably set up Golden Goat stuff too. Yeah, yeah. 
And then the rest of this feels like fairly standard. It's mostly just like everything that was kind of wacky made it into like top four, which is kind of funny. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, here are all like the, the super like normal teams. Um, I, I guess we do see one more Garchomp. We have like no info on that, unfortunately. This is probably Sandvale stuff. Cause yeah, it just looks rock. like Sand Hyper Offense, like Focus Ash, Lycanroc. It could have been like, this one could also possibly be Choice Band Garchomp just because we see like Tailwind Setter plus like Flutter Main. Yeah. Redirection. I, I wouldn't put it past it being choice ban, but yeah. It's probably Terra Flying Terranitar as mm -hmm. well, so you can click Earthquake next to that, as well as Murkrow. Yeah. All right. Garchomp. But, uh, yeah. Garchomp doing Garchomp things. It's kind of it's kind of hot, you know? It's kind of hot. It, I mean, it's, Garchomp has always been one of those Pokemon that's like, hey, you kind of can't be bad. <laughs> yeah, it's like in Sword it's and Shield. Hard to use, it, it, yeah. In Sword and Shield, like when it came back, like Lando was a thing, and then Garchomp started like popping up again, and people were like, Oh, I didn't realize I had to respect that. You know, yeah, you didn't yeah. like recognize it, but it, it, it still exists. Respect, yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm so excited for Terra Lando. That's gonna be so cool. But ew, ew. <laughs> that's gonna be it. Uh, a bit of a smaller tournament, obviously. You know, um, but it's still like a really interesting result. I actually think that Garchomp stocks might pick up specifically because of this win, but I don't think enough people are like covering it. Like, I haven't seen anyone really like cover the results of this tournament, which is mad disrespectful, dude. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think there's going to be more than one Garchomp in top 32. <laughs> Charlotte, no offense. Nah, we're going to see a Garchomp somewhere. At, at the very least, I think we're, we'll see like Garchomp pop, on, uh, Garchomp pop up on ladder, you know? Yeah. All right. Have a nice one, guys. Bye. See you.